call to order the board meeting for the Reno Sparks Convention Visitors Authority for September 26th. And let's start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance by Mr. DeLone today. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. And a roll call, Madam Clerk. Chairman Lucy. In the process of doing so. Mr. Caricelli? Here. Ms. Keel? Here. Mr. Lawson? Here. Mayor Sheevy? Ms. Silver? Here. Mr. Sturbins? Here. Mr. Wood? Here. We have a quorum. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking for approval of the agenda. Bob Lucy. Oh, wait a minute. Public comment first. Do we have any public comment? Anybody wishing to speak at this time? Okay. Well, let's go for, I'm looking for approval of the agenda. Motion by Mr. Sturbins. Second by Mr. Wood. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, approval of the minutes, city additions, corrections, deletions. Looking for a motion. Anybody? <laughs> Mr. Wood. Come on, we. We're going to do this a lot faster than Bob does it. You hear that, Bob? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. You're hysterical. <laughs> we can turn you off now. That's with kind of a nice power to have. All right, I have a motion by Mr. Sturbins, or Mr. Woods, and a second by Mr. Sturbins. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Presentations, RC, RCBA board appointment of the Nevada Resort Association Board of Directors seat pursuant to NRS 244A.6011 D4. Shall I introduce Mr. Kornstein? Absolutely. So, uh, Mr. Kornstein, welcome. Uh, for the other members of the Board of Directors, uh, Mr. Kornstein serves as a member of the Board of Directors of uh, Caesars Entertainment Corporation. He is the chairman of Caesars Strategy and Finance Committee, and further, he is chairman of Caesars Transaction Committee and a member of its Governance and Corporate Responsibility Committee. Uh, and uh, Mr. Kornstein comes from a recommendation from the Nevada Resort Association to uh, fill the seat uh, vacated by uh, Lee Dillard of uh, Harris Reno. Okay, you guys, all, everyone has a letter uh, in their packet. And uh, while anyone can make a comment, it's only the elected officials get to vote on this. So I'm looking for a motion by Mr. Uh, Lucy. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, I would uh, make the motion to recommend Don Kornstein to fill the vacancy. All right, and I'll second that. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, you're in. That easy. <laughs> So, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, I just want to make clear for the record that the appointment will be uh, effective immediately and will be for the uh, balance of uh, the, the term vacated by Mr. Dillard. Correct. All right. Welcome. Um, and then, uh, because Mr. Dillard was also Secretary Treasurer, we need to have a new Secretary Treasurer. Don't everybody jump at once. Mr. Caricelli, do I see you volunteering over there? No, I'm sitting. <laughs> I still, we need a secretary treasurer. So the, the, the process here, uh, secretary and treasurer is actually two separate seats, but they can be combined. So if that's what the board would like to do, the process would be for a motion to combine secretary treasurer to have one person serve. If that motion passes, uh, the, the, the chair or vice chair will open up the floor for nominations. Nominations are made. The nomination period is closed, and then there's a vote. And if you want to keep them separate, it's the, the same issue. We just don't have the motion to combine them. I mean, we kept them together, so. I'd make a motion to keep them combined. Okay. Motion and a second to keep them combined. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Aye. All right, now we're looking for nominations. 
can see anybody back there. Um, Mr. Caracelli. Mr. Chair, I'd like, if you if you don't mind, I'd like to uh, to place a nomination on the floor for consideration. I'd like to nominate uh, Bill Wood for, and have his name be considered for the Secretary Treasurer position. That that looks like a motion and a second. <laughs> Any other nominations? Hold on, Mr. Wood. Okay. May I say something? Yes. Um, I would love to accept that nomination, but it must be understood that I term out in January. So it would only be for probably two or three meetings. Um, so let's keep that into consideration. Also, I believe Mr. Sturbins, you, uh, what was your term? Was that January also? December. December. What's the pleasure? Do we have any further nominations? We'll close the nominations. I'm looking for a motion. Thank you. Motion by Ms. Silver and second by Mr. Caracelli. All those in favor? Aye. The reluctant volunteer. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. And now we have a SMG general update. Mike Day. All right, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Co-Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board, good morning. Uh, for the record, I'm Michael Day, General Manager for SMG Reno, and I'm here to, uh, in the spirit of brevity, give you a, a brief update uh, from the facility side um, here uh, after the first two months of our new fiscal year. And uh, the first thing I wanted to mention was uh, earlier in the year, it was, it was uh, mentioned and broadcast uh, through the media that SMG, uh, the, the longest, largest uh, company that does facility management was going to be merging with AEG facilities. Uh, this merger had to go through a, a uh, 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 had to be cleared both in the U.S. and Europe by regulatory uh, committees, uh, and it has now received all uh, uh, clearances. And as of October 1st, AEG uh, facilities and SMG will combine, and we will be ASM Global. Uh, Bob Newman is, will be the president, uh, CEO uh, of ASM Global. Wes Wesley, our current CEO, will go up to the board of directors uh, and run it from there. We had an international conference call yesterday uh, with all the leadership, and I, I knew Bob's background. He's, he came up through 20 or so years uh, of SMG. What I didn't know was all but one of his executive team also came through. SMG. So they all talked about the synergy and how, how natural and smooth um, this merger has been from the corporate level. On the facility level, there really is no change uh, on the facility level, but we are a bigger family uh, with more resources. Uh, a quick financial update. Again, Ju July and August was uh, were, excuse me, uh, our first two months under our own budget and our own operating plan. Uh, for the month of July, uh, our adjusted gross income was 219000 which was 114000 better than budget. Our total expenses was five, uh, were $5,000 under budget. So we had 120000 net gain to budget for the month of July. Uh, in August, our adjusted gross was uh, 485000 which was 84 above uh, of our budget. We had some additional in indirect expenses that we didn't uh, plan for. Um, however, we still finished uh, the month of August $11,000 better than budget. On the sales side, the SMG sales team closed $165,705,000 uh, of new business for the month of July. Our top dog award went to Maria. And uh, of that 165K, uh, 26,000 of that was new budget, uh, new business, excuse me. For the month of August, uh, the SMG sales team closed 134,000. Um, Casey uh, Kasten, who is our sales and event coordinator out at the Livestock Event Center, was our top dog at 98,000 uh, of that. And over 100,000 of that was all new business for us. 
Uh, on the operations side, we're doing uh, a, a lot of capital improvements that are being done, uh, I, uh, including out of the Livestock Event Center. We're putting all new LED lights around all the buildings. And at the Livestock Event Center, I happened to be out there the other day when they finished one of the banks and turned it on, and it was like the chorus sang. Uh, it, it looks like that again. And uh, so thank you, Trent, and your team uh, is really uh, starting to look fantastic out there. Um, in August, our operational trainings, we did slip, trip, and fall prevention, welding and brazing program, uh, as well as contractor safety. Every month we have a number of safety trainings that we do for all of our staff. And the ultimate update, uh, as we are putting in new assets into the bowling stadium, and we're gonna talk more about that in a few minutes, uh, those are all being put into the Altum program. There's now over uh, 1,200 uh, assets installed into the, asset, uh, into the Altum program to date. It has given us uh, over 1,500 preventative maintenance and non-preventative maintenance work orders, and of those, over 1,000 have been completed. Uh, so now, uh, quickly about each of the facilities, Reno Events Center. Uh, last year, last fiscal year, we had 54 event days, and I put some of the highlights, uh, concerts, some of our community service highlights, including uh, what we do for the homeless uh, and the Vietnam veterans, very, very important uh, community events that we do uh, and assist with. For this fiscal year, we have 17 budgeted shows and we have already confirmed 21. Um, and I say that with a grain of salt because you know, last year we lost one of our concerts due to weather, due to snow in the pass, and the pass getting closed. Uh, performers can get sick, lame, or lazy, things can come up, but, uh, but we're on target for uh, at least 21. We're at every day those conversations are going on with promoters and agents and we have some uh, exciting holds. And one of the things that we're gonna do also is uh, a new little program we're gonna call hashtag rock the REC. And part of this is you know, we're finally gonna have our own dedicated website where we can feature our own facilities. And probably most of us in this room get that email every couple of weeks from those facilities where you like to go see shows and you have all the upcoming concerts and the nice video and pictures and hey, if you just click here if you wanna buy a ticket. And uh, we're gonna have that now for our facilities. Uh, our, our new marketing manager, Courtney's doing a fantastic job kind of getting us out of the dark ages there uh, for concerts and event programming specifically. And uh, our social media is gaining a, a lot of uh, momentum right now as well. And what I listed there for you is all of our confirmed events for the rest of this fiscal year, but you're gonna hear some more names in a few weeks uh, as we confirm those additional concerts. For the Reno Sparks Livestock Event Center, uh, we had 149 event days last year. Again, I put some highlights there. Obviously, the 100th Reno Rodeo was, uh, was the big one, uh, but we have a number, number of equine events returning. We have a new um, manager out there, the facility, who comes from that industry. He's known and respected, and he's helping us improve not only the services to uh, the horses, the livestock, and, and their owners, but also the patrons who are coming out there. So we're excited about uh, the future for the Livestock Event Center. And I've highlighted there some of the upcoming events. We actually have Hispanic Rodeo this, this weekend at the Outdoor Arena, and then a number of equine uh, events coming up. We get into the winter, then we have our wrestling and our other events that we host. The Reno Sparks Convention Center, we had 490 event days in the last fiscal year. Uh, the highlights, most of, uh, we all know the, some of those big names, but I also want to mention uh, you know, the, the last two there, the U.S. Junior Olympic Qualifier. That was a great event for us. These are, these are the future faces on our Wheaties boxes in the future, and it was great to host them and the, the U.S. Gymnastics uh, uh, Council. We also had an internationally televised ESPN Boxing Championship event as well. And our upcoming events, we have American Fisheries moving in as we speak. Our pre-con is here in an hour and 45 minutes, actually. Uh, and we then uh, I've highlighted just some of the big events coming up, our Extraordinary Women's Conference that we're very excited about next month. Um, and we have the American Angus Association also in next month, pop culture. And then we get into the big events in the, in the winter with Wild Sheep Worldwide and, of, of course, uh, SCI. Last but not least, what we really want to spend a few minutes on today is uh, the National Bowling Stadium. And, and uh, the, the, the work and the upgrades inside are coming along very, very well. Um, for the last fiscal year, we actually had 97 event days in the National Bowling Stadium. Even though it was technically closed for about half the, half the year under construction, we still did a number of events down there. 
Um, the highlights were the, the end of the USBC Women's and Senior Championships. Uh, we also host a number of community events down there with the Special Olympics, um, the high school and the junior assembly uh, group that we host as well. Uh, but looking forward to the future, a couple things that we're going to do, and that's why we have a, a little gift, I think, that was passed around to you, yes, um, uh, to get you all in the bowling spirit. We're going to open Kingpin Club uh, to the general public. The Kingpin Club by Brunswick is going to open on Wednesday nights from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. starting October 16. Uh, and uh, we are going to invite our recreational and family bowlers to come down and have a chance to have some fun in the Kingpin at night on Wednesdays. And on Thursdays, we're going we're gonna to market it towards the UNR students. More and more students are within walking distance of that facility. Um, Dante and the F&B team are putting together some, some fun food and drink specials and combos that we think the college kids will be excited about. And um, so they're going to come down and, and Thursday nights, if I, I, I'm being told, is turned into the Friday nights that maybe we all enjoyed in the past as there's not so many classes on Fridays or they just choose not to go. But Friday, Thursday nights is a big night out for them. So we're going we're gonna to invite all of them down to have some fun with us in the Kingpin Club. Then, when upstairs, the National Bowling Stadium, when it's completed, um, sometime in December, we should have all the furnishings and everything completed there. Um, we are planning an event in the, in the mid-January. You're going to have more details about this coming. But we're going to have a grand reopening, a cutting of the, uh, of the ribbon, and, um, and we're going to invite everybody down to bowl. And we want to introduce a new uh, idea we have. It's called the Kingpin Cup. And we want to get the hotel casinos competing against each other, our media outlets around town to come down and compete each other for their very own annual Kingpin Cup, which we will present to the winners. So we think that's going to be a lot of fun in the community. And moving forward, we hope that's going to be an annual event, but also moving forward once the United States Bowling Congress, which will be here from March 21 to July 5, once that wraps up, we want to start opening up the National Bowling bowling stadium upstairs to the general public on holidays and have theme events where we can invite down the recreational bowlers and the families to come down and have some fun with us and have a chance to actually see and bowl in, an, in, uh, in our national bowling stadium. That's all I have, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Happy to entertain any questions. Do you have any questions for Mr. Day? Thank you. Thank you. I like your uh, idea of the uh, website. That makes perfect sense. Thank you. Okay, Mr. DeLone, we are on to you. Thank you very much. Um, we have some other highlights on the National Bowling Stadium. It's nearing uh, the completion of its $4 million renovation, which has been uh, completely funded by the downtown $2 fund. And uh, as Mr. Day pointed out, in October, we will relaunch with a soft opening. Uh, the delivery of the new furniture follows in late November, and after its receipt, the uh, stadium will be fully functional and ready for the USBC uh, tournament uh, when they take possession in late January. And uh, they are still forecasting 75,000 room nights of bowling business uh, coming to our destination during that USBC Open tournament. Uh, both the RSCVA sales team and the SMG and SMG have developed sales plans for the reactivation of the bowling stadium uh, with uh, bookings, bowling sweepers, parties, events, and other activity. A copy of the RSCVA sales plan is in your packets. Uh, as Mr. Day pointed out, the Kingpin Club will open to the public on a limited weekly schedule. And uh, also last Wednesday on September 18th, uh, Mayor Sheevy reviewed the sales activation programs on behalf of the city of Reno and indicated her approval. Um, work continues at the Livestock Events Center. Uh, we have spent quite a bit of money there this year and have been aggressive with uh, renovation uh, and capital improvements. Um, we are right now, uh, as we speak, abating the armory of asbestos and uh, the demolition process is in full swing. Um, we anticipate the site to be ready, cleared, and graded within the next 100 to 120 days from now, so approximately at Christmas time. Um, through the RSCVA uh, sales efforts, three new horse shows, equine events, will be coming to the uh, updated facility. Uh, those are the Ranch Sorting National Championship Western State Finals 
That'll be held October 11 to 13. Uh, a new Bucking Bull event, the American Heritage West, will be showcased at the facility in May. And a new quarter horse show, The Challenge of the Breeds, will be held next year, August 19 to 23. As you may re recall, we now have a dedicated salesperson that's responsible for soliciting and booking equine events. And thanks go to our equine sales director, Rhonda Leach, who's over here. No cowboy boots or hat today for securing the events. Thank you, Rhonda, for your efforts. Since the start of the fiscal year uh, on July 1, the sales department is ahead of pace in future bookings. In the month of July, the department booked 25,012 room nights of future convention business ahead of their monthly goal of 19,000. In August, convention sales booked 31,646 room nights of future business ahead of their monthly goal in August of 23,876. The destination and our uh, resorts were active in force in August at the American Society of Association Executives, one of uh, our industry's largest business-to-business -business shows that was held in Columbus, Ohio. We had 182 potential customers visit our booth and 58 attended our uh, Tuesday night uh, private client event there. At IMEX America in Las Vegas, that also is one of the largest business-to-business -business tourism and convention trade shows in the entire world. Reno Tahoe was there uh, two weeks ago with our 20 by 20 foot display and a collection of hoteliers accompanying us also. 230 customers visited the booth and 70 attended our uh, client reception. Interest is strong for Reno Tahoe and is driven by, I think, an excellent group and tourism sales team and a strong marketing brand that is Reno Tahoe. For citywide business, uh, in December, in the first week, we will host uh, through the Department of Education the um, Federal Student Aid Training Conference. Uh, that is 15,000 room nights coming to our destination the first time in one of the slowest months of the year and using a number of the resorts here in the community. Uh, at a previous board meeting of the RSCVA, Mayor Pro Tempore of Sparks, Ed Lawson, and our vice chairman today, uh, asked the staff to research the viability of the RSCVA constructing its own office rather than renting as we do now. Uh, after interviewing a few firms here locally, we have engaged uh, the local architecture and engineering company, BJG, to provide a simple design and estimated building cost for us. It's not an expensive undertaking. That scoping project will be completed soon, will be presented to the board in the near future. We have identified a possible location at an unused corner of parking lot C. That would be uh, over on Kitsky, behind the Indian uh, Polaris uh, motorcycle and ATV dealership. We own a parcel of property there that is underutilized, and that may be an effective place for us to uh, put a building of the size we need, approximately 18,000 square feet on one level. We have been advised uh, so far by the engineering firm that the old Lake Mansion site, which sits at the corner of Kitsky in South Virginia, may prove to be uh, too small, and hence we would have to build multi-story, and that would add to, uh, to the cost. And also they have cautioned us against putting the, uh, attaching the building to the existing convention center because they feel that that will drive up the cost significantly. So we will come back to uh, this board shortly with um, some, some numbers for you to contemplate. In review of the RCVA monthly scorecard for July, cash occupied rooms in all of Washoe County uh, were 329,772. That was down slightly 5.1% uh, from the year prior. However, average daily rate countywide, conversely, was up by 5.4% from the year prior to $125.64. That does include resort fee that is taxable. Uh, in just the Washoe County hotel market segment, of which 43 properties report statistics, including all uh, of the resorts represented on our board, Cash occupied room nights were down from the year prior by 6.2% at 273,372. 
Again, here conversely though, the average daily rate of those 43 properties was up by 5.3% from the year prior to $131.25. Of the top 11 properties reporting, uh, where we drive these following statistics, the market mix in July was 16.9%. You could just round that up to 17% of it was convention business. 27.8% was tourism driven. Fully 29.7% was comp room. And 24.8% was the free independent traveler making a reservation on their own outside of a tourism uh, OTA. We now have uh, reports f uh, following from uh, finance and uh, marketing and tourism sales. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I'd like to continue with the scorecard. You're welcome to turn to it in your book. Um, the marketing department, we came out uh, for the first month in the, of the year, we came out really strongly for our website activity. You'll see that overall web sessions are up 19%. And our change in strategy from awareness to engagement resulted in partner referrals being up 24%. Um, we changed out some of our buys uh, that we were doing, our network buys, and we had a great response from our target markets in the Bay Area, Seattle, and the LA Basin. And you'll see that we are experiencing very strong increases in these markets. Um, one of the driving forces, in addition to those few things that I've just mentioned, is we increased the digital spend in July of 19 versus July of 18 by 52 percent. So you can see the impact of the advertising spend. Um, on another note, we're working very closely with the air service, uh, with the airport on air service, and we've got some real promising irons in the fire that we're pursuing. Phil and I have a meeting after this meeting over at the airport to discuss an opportunity that just came up yesterday. Um, and I just received the year-over-year uh, numbers from the airport for August. Our packet uh, reflects July, but to share with you, flights are up 14.2% and seats are up 16.8% for air service in August. Um, on the airline front, starting November 14th, Frontier Airlines will begin their nonstop service between Las Vegas and Reno, four flights a week. And um, Two final things I want to point out. We had great coverage in the um, August Men's Journal. And this is what we're all striving for. And I'm just going to read the two sentences that they had reported. They, they identified Reno Tahoe as one of the top 25 bachelor party destinations in the US. And quoting, why go? Those looking for a more budget-friendly alternative to Las Vegas can set their sights on Reno Tahoe. Bring the boys to this bustling city situated in the middle of breathtaking desert landscapes. There's something for everyone in Reno Tahoe, including active escapades like ascending the world's tallest outdoor rock climbing wall at base camp, downing pints at the region's 20 craft breweries, or indulging in phenomenal nightlife excursions, including casinos, clubs, and concert venues. So it kind of capsulizes how we're uh, establishing our destination. It's really neat to see it out there in writing. Um, I don't even remember what it's like to be a bachelor anymore. <laughs> uh, and then last, I'm going to pass this smart meetings publication around. We had some great coverage, and I've tabbed it. Golden Age for the Art in the Silver State. And it talks about how arts and culture and what our destination is doing, including Las Vegas, that impacts the convention and meeting planning guide. And I'm proud to give credit to um, a gentleman from our office who actually took this picture of the space whale downtown. They don't call him out, but I will. It's Andy. Uh, Andy Fox. Fox from our department. Thank you.
is the July Tourism Channel room nights reported were 75,734, or a decrease of 481 room nights from last July, which puts us just shy of the 97.5% to 97.5% of the monthly target of 77,739 room nights. Activity for the last 30 days for the team and the next 30 days coming up on partnership marketing, we're working with Expedia, MailPound, and GDS programming with Saber. For the next 30 days, we'll continue with those companies, but we'll also add United Airlines Vacations in support of the new air service out of Houston. In fact, we just received their final proposal this morning, so we'll be uh, uh, implementing that very soon. Trade shows, we attended the Travel Nevada, a sales mission in Mexico, a brand new show with Brand USA, a show in London, sports leisure vacations in Active America, China. And uh, this week, we're, we're conducting a sales mission in Dallas and Houston, and I'm pr proud to report that all four of our client development events were sold out, sold out and well attended. Uh, we'll be going to the Bay Area as well to call on motor coach and receptive operators next month. And we'll be attending the Connect Thrive a conference, which is an LGBTQIA conference. Hope I didn't forget any letters. Plus, 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 plus okay. And we conducted four FAMs in the last month, and we have three FAMs scheduled for this month. So we're ramping up, ramping up pretty, 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 pretty good here. Questions? So, do you none? Esther, do you? Thank you and good morning. Uh, the marketing team has been uh, working with OnStrategy to update our annual marketing plan based on the approved corporate strategic plan. Uh, as part of that uh, planning, on September 18th, we brought together all four of our key vendors for a marketing strategy meeting to make sure everybody was aligned and working in the same direction. We have a very powerful team we've put together, and we appreciate this board for recognizing the strength of those relationships and maintaining them. In the near future, we'll announce a date for a marketing committee meeting where we'll share the specifics of our annual plan. We continue a robust program with influencers and have worked with a few more over the last 30 days. Christina Ernie in our department will provide a quarterly update uh, of this and other digital efforts at the October board meeting. Last week, we completed two days of photo shoots in our area to complement the meetings and convention side of our B2B marketing efforts. Uh, that will complement the leisure uh, campaign as well. And lastly, EDON recently awarded RSCVA with the Community Arts Partner of the Year at their annual arts and business luncheon. We're very proud of that effort to continue on working with the community and arts. Thank you. All right, questions? And congratulations on that award too award that was pretty awesome okay no questions we're moving on to uh well, we're going to get to finance right i'll be quick i know it's an exciting part of everyone's day it all riveting finance, doesn't it? it all starts and ends riveting with finance stuff that you have uh actually um, we only the july financial interim financials are in your packet uh, not much to announce other than we are on target for budget. Out of $4.5 million projected revenue, we had $4.5 million of revenue. We were off $7,000 on budget. Um, so everything's looking good for the fiscal year. Um, I would also like to announce that the authority has once again received the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for the from the Government Finance Officers Association. I know this is, look at that, look at that, huh, huh? Yeah. As you notice, accountants don't do trophies, they do little <laughs> just glossy pieces of paper, so. We'll put that in the trophy. How many years in a row is this now, like it's 150? Like, uh, it's like 28 or something, yeah. yeah it's like, <laughs> Good idea, good yeah. job. Yeah. Um, also, Trent LaFerrier and Jose Martinez have successfully completed the certification as contract administrators through the state of Nevada. Uh, we're pleased that they do our capital projects for the RSCVA. And that's all I have to report. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Chisel? All right. As soon as Alex got up, we're going to get to him now. Oh, is it my turn? It's yeah. your turn, Alex. <laughs> You know, that's like the waiter always comes up when you just took a bite of food. Exactly. <laughs> just a sip of water. Though. Wants to ask you your life story. Good morning, everyone. Um, man, this is so exciting. I've been listening 
Uh, Reno is absolutely on fire. Uh, it's a total upswing. And I am so fortunate and I'm so glad that I have become part of this community uh, for the last year. This is my anniversary, basically. I, I started last uh, September uh, building putting this organization into place um, that you have worked so hard to kind of, you know, put the, 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 the pattern into place on all the prep work that you guys have done. And I want to thank the RC RCBA board, staff, and Phil uh, for your support of this uh, first business improvement district in the state of Nevada. And I hope I can convince you that uh, your investment, your support has not been in vain. Um, this organization uh, has really moved the needle as much as I think a business improvement district can move the needle uh, within about 10 months of existence. Um, so I just want to present you just a few highlights and yes. Oh, for the record, my name is Alex Satinsky, and I'm the executive director of the Downtown Reno Partnership. Um, we now have 20 ambassadors. Actually, we have 21 and a half uh, ambassadors and, um, since uh, the UNR contracted with uh, Street Plus as well and added ambassadors to uh, support the uh, pathway from uh, the Wolfbeck Tower. Uh, to campus. So we have actually surveillance. We have an ambassador, a dedicated ambassador almost at all times. Uh, at extended hours, even uh, the ambassadors roaming around until 3 a.m. at times, um, depending on, you know, how long students uh, study in the library until 2 or 3 in the morning. And <clears throat> we want to make sure that they walk uh, home to their dorms uh, safely. Um, we uh, have two social outreach specialists included now. Uh, these are specialized ambassadors uh, that really are focused on outreach to uh, our um, uh, transient community that we have in downtown. Uh, uh, talk to them, engage with them, uh, and make sure that if we ever can, uh, we will place them into programs, into long-term programs. And so far, I'm happy to report it's a drop in the bucket, but I'm happy to report that 50, around 50 placements into permanent treatment programs have been initiated through our ambassadors uh, within the last 10 months. Again, it's a drop in the bucket, and not all of them stay. Uh, I have to say that as a disclaimer. Um, as you know, recovery is a challenge, and it's a back and forth many times. So we may place the same individuals into long-term programs, hopefully, a few times until it sticks and they really stay and uh, they are in permanent true recovery. Um, I just want to give you just a few highlights. And by the way, uh, in front of you, you have our annual report that just came out. Um, that repeats those highlights as well, so you have them uh, in front of you whenever you need. Over 900 graffiti incidents were removed uh, within the last 10 months. A over 190 illegal dumpings reported. Sidewalks repairs were reported and implemented. Uh, fi over 500 referrals to services, and that refers to the uh, transient community that we have. Over 500 shopping carts collected. And it is for real. Uh, we have that many shopping carts uh, in the downtown vicinity. Uh, over 3,000 wellness checks. I'm just brushing over so that uh, you kind of get the scope of the work uh, that our ambassadors have been done on the street uh, to really create an environment in downtown that hopefully will become even more conducive to your efforts to bring more visitors into town. Uh, and downtown, uh, hopefully every day will look more attractive and more pleasant and inviting uh, to people that come and visit us. Um, we um, made 18,700 business and property uh, and residence check-ins. So our ambassadors, when they patrol, they always check into businesses and say hi to them, anything that we can do for them, any promotion that we can do for them. Uh, our ambassadors uh, have messenger bags with them uh, where if, uh, businesses have coupons, deals, specials, whatever they want to promote uh, to visitors in downtown, the ambassadors will do that uh, because aside from... Um, reporting incidents and dealing with the uh, homeless community in downtown. They're also concierges on the street. They visit, they, uh, they greet visitors, uh, they give them recommendations, advice where to go. Um, the fun part is that the ambassadors have been invited to buy businesses more and more now, restaurants, entertainment venues, what have you, museums, to experience them themselves. Uh, 
so that they can actually speak, they can speak educatedly to people on the street, uh, to visitors that they have experienced a particular venue. You know, go to Top Golf. This is a really cool place. We've done that last week, and it's so much fun for the whole family. And they speak differently once they have experienced it themselves, or food recommendations, things like that. Um, we have distributed over 3,000 marketing materials uh, to uh, residents in downtown, but also to visitors of downtown. And I want to invite you again, and we are working with you guys, um, but if you have anything that you would like to get the message out, uh, utilize the ambassador team. Uh, we are, there are foot, uh, feet and eyes on the ground and foot on the pavement, and uh, they talk to visitors and they have a direct contact to them. Uh, any messages that you would like to give out, uh, the ambassadors are happy to do. Um, in regards to economic and community development, um, we have received a $35,000 grant this year uh, that afforded us to produce the brochure that you also have on your, in front of you. It's a smaller brochure that is a brochure that was mailed to 4,000 households and businesses in the downtown vicinity to educate people once again about what a bid is, what we do, what our mission is, and how the assessment structure uh, is formulated so that everyone, uh, hopefully by now, will really know what a bid is and what we do and how it's funded and how uh, our uh, property owners and, and residents that own property pay for it. Um, in addition, we were able to add uh, 12 bike racks in the downtown vicinity. Um, and window clings that we created um, with local artists uh, work on them just to make vacancies a little bit more uh, pleasant um, for the time being. We have worked with On Strategy um, to develop a three-year strategic plan. Uh, the plan is complete by now. Actually, a short version of it, a summary, is in that annual report in front of you. So if you care, uh, please educate yourself about what the goals and the objectives for the Downtown Reno Partnership is for the next three years. Uh, we also hired an economic development manager, I'm really happy to report. Uh, he is already busy gathering data. Uh, we will be a source for and a resource uh, for developers, uh, investors, and businesses that want to open shop, hopefully in downtown Reno, uh, with information, numbers, data, statistics, whatever we can provide to them, in addition to referrals to incentives that we're currently working with the city on. Hopefully we can make our incentives a little bit more robust uh, to really get downtown Reno redeveloped a tad faster than it already is. There's a lot of development in the pipeline. We're already working on a map, by the way. This will take a little while, though. <clears throat> and the map will show at a glance all the different development projects uh, in the pipeline and in work um, and in uh, implementation within the downtown uh, vicinity. So you will see at a glance, this, is, uh, this was just proposed, the permits were pulled, this is in, in under construction, and so on. So you will get a good idea overall uh, what downtown is doing uh, when it comes to development. Uh, and there's a few more of these things. I don't want to bore you with too much detail. We are uh, currently surveying. We're just preparing a survey of UNR. Uh, we want to make sure that we have spoken to the students and to faculty and understand what their needs are, what their wants are, uh, what they see is doing great in downtown, what they see is missing in downtown, and that data uh, that we will bring to various stakeholders, including yourself, um, so that you can also possibly adjust or speak to them in particular when it comes to any kind of campaigns and, uh, and uh, uh, um, activities that you do to, to hopefully reach our student body. Um, these are just a couple of pictures, though. So this is one of the bike racks that we installed. This is in front of City Hall. Um, and this is one of the uh, vinyl clings that we produced to kind of make a vacant storefront look a little bit more attractive. In regards to marketing, um, we have done a few things. Um, we created small business awareness through various outlets, our website, social media that we do on a regular basis. Um, we uh, created a summer in downtown Reno campaign where we tried, and it's a small campaign, where we're trying to attract people that come to downtown for all these events that are already happening in downtown and hopefully become aware of the local businesses that are there at the same time. So if you come to an event, enjoy yourself, but you know, keep in mind that 
these amazing coffee shops are there too. Or there's great little retail that you can enjoy while you're there. Uh, and there are specials and offerings for you that you can take advantage of while you're at an event. Um, we are uh, working for uh, on special uh, things for our um, uh, Wolfpack students, uh, the students that stay, there's over a thousand students now that stay in downtown. Uh, so we work with businesses to make sure that they all offer uh, special discounts and things for students. So once they're in downtown, they can enjoy downtown, it makes it a little bit more affordable. Uh, and then various business campaigns like Mother's Day in downtown, Valentine's in downtown, and things like that. Um, upcoming content uh, that we're currently working on is a local's guide to downtown casinos. So the intent with that is that we want to make sure that people, people that like gaming are going to the casinos. It's a no-brainer. People that don't like gaming so much, we want to, we want to make sure that they understand you still can go to a casino because there is so much going on in experience and entertainment and opportunities that you have in there that's not even that gaming related. You know, whether it's a show, whether it's Top Golf, whether it's a spa, whether it's there's so many different things you can enjoy uh, while you're here um, when you go to the casinos without necessarily uh, gaming if you're not into that. Uh, we're pr uh, producing a fall winter holiday guide um, for visitors and for residents, uh, things that you can do during the holidays, any specials that businesses offer during the holidays, gift ideas uh, that are maybe a little bit outside the box. Um, we're also working on a video series with Foundry. Foundry, uh, the marketing firm here in Reno, has been just incredible and amazing. They have been supporting us so much. Uh, and they, we are now in the process of uh, drafting videos, probably one video a month, uh, to feature downtown businesses and downtown venues to make sure people understand you know, what is going on in downtown and what, how lively downtown is and how you can participate in it. Um, you probably know that. I'm probably preaching to the choir. Uh, when I talk to residents, and it really is sad, you know, a lot of residents in Reno, they've been here for many generations, do not go to downtown anymore. And they still tell me uh, today, you know, I haven't been to downtown in six months. Uh, when I tell them, have you seen the ambassadors? When I tell them what I do, no. It's like, have you been to downtown? No, I haven't been in probably six or eight months. And so I keep telling them, please go back. You know, you may not really understand what downtown has today uh, for you, even if you're a resident. Um, so this is the effort that we put forth, is really focusing on more the local and the regional uh, demographics. Uh, we're developing a student guide. Um, you know, it's where can you go? Places to study, ideas where students can go, where it's quiet, where, it's, uh, where there is internet connection, where the Wi-Fi, where there is outlets. Um, you know, but things that they may not even know. And some of these places are actually in casinos. Uh, and the students don't know that necessarily. So we want to make sure that they get uh, aware of that. Um, this is just a quick um, summary of our stats in, in media. We were able to produce within the last 10 months about um, 118,000, 119,000 almost in publicity value uh, through all kinds of things. Media mentions, through on radio, on TV, um, on print. Um, the audience reach uh, is almost a million at this point. Uh, we have almost 2,000 followers on our social media, which for who we are, I think is a decent number um, that we were able to produce within 10 months, uh, and almost 13,000 uh, page views on our website. Um, that's in a nutshell where we are today. Um, I didn't want to bore you with more detail. There's a lot more to talk about, uh, but I just wanted to give you a quick overview of where we are today, what we have done the last 10 months, and I would love to hear from you if you have any questions, suggestions. Um, this to me is a great partnership, and I hope that we will become a supporter of your efforts as well in our little uh, um, area that we focus on, which is just the downtown vicinity. Um, thank you for your attention. Thank Questions you. Questions for Alex? you got to get a little more enthusiasm. I'm not feeling the passion. <laughs> you know, I, I injured my shoulder, otherwise I would do a handstand right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wood. Yeah, Alex, I just want to thank you. What you're doing is great. And you said, you mentioned that 50 is a small drop in the bucket of getting people into treatment. But if you save one life, that's, that's important. I know. 
So, so thank you very much. And thank you for mentioning saving lives. I forgot to mention that. The ambassadors within the last 10 months have actually saved six lives, for real, uh, because they enjoyed Narcon training. Uh, so they know how to administer that nasal spray that counteracts opiate overdoses. And six people were, those lives were saved and they were brought to the hospital in the ambulance and they with most, most likely would not be around if the ambassadors weren't there. So thank you for mentioning that. Anyone else? Thank you, Alex. You guys are doing good work. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. Moving on to item F1. Review discussion of possible approval of the wireless network lease with American Tower Corporation with a convention center. Mr. Chisel. Uh, Robert Chisel, uh, for the record, basically this is a lease with American Tower to um, place a non-denominational wireless network within the convention center. This is a tower, internal tower, not an external tower that they would then market to the uh, carriers that are FCC licensed, that would be Sprint, AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, et cetera. Uh, and then they would run a cellular network within the building. This would provide better cellular connection for our attendees, which right now sometimes have coverage problems. And we've had complaints from uh, vendors who are in the building with cellular connection. This would be no cost to the authority. Questions? Looking for a motion. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Sturban, second by Ms. Silver. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, possible approval of the Reno Spark Convention and Visitor Authority investment policy. Mr. Chisel again, I'm assuming? Yes, sir. Um, this is an updated investment policy that the board had last approved. Uh, back in um, January 2018. Uh, basically, there were some changes in the Nevada Revised Statutes through the legislative session. Uh, basically, what it does is allows us to invest in government securities and AAA and AA rated corporate bonds. I would state at this time, any excess cash has been invested in governmental securities at this point and in conformance with Nevada Revised Statutes. Okay, questions? Looking for a motion. Mm -hmm. Got a motion by Mr. Caracelli. Second. Second by Mr. Sturbins. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, review and discussion possible approval of the event purchase of reimbursement of the cost of the cost from the city arena for carpeting and HVAC in the National Bowling Stadium in an amount not to exceed $143,573. No sense. Uh, again, uh, as the city of Reno is completing the remodel of the fourth floor of the bowling stadium, it has come to uh, their attention and ours that there are a number of items that were not uh, in included in the original project um, that we feel should be done, and the city agrees also to make the facility ready for the USBC that comes in January. Uh, unfortunately, the city of Reno is um, somewhat lacking in the funds at this time to get these projects underway and get them done by the USBC coming in late January. So they have requested from us an advance of the money to uh, finish the carpeting on the fourth floor and put the air conditioning system in the uh, south atrium, which uh, currently heats up to over 90 degrees. Uh, once the city receives the additional capital surcharge um, in the $2 fund that they receive, they would reimburse the authority for any of the costs. Robert, maybe touch on how many days we think it'll take for them to reimburse. Uh, it should take only about one month. That's usually what they get in the $2 surcharge is about $150,000 a month. Uh, they, their concern was that it would dip down their fund below 200,000 and they're worried about if some other incident or other item breaks that they would be without the money. So they have requested our assistance in advancing it. Uh, their capital project surcharge subcommittee of the city council has approved this request. And uh, we believe this is a fair request from the authority to help the city out and help the bowling stadium. Move to approve. Motion to approve. Second, any uh, discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Uh, item G1, field alone, goals and objectives 2019-2020. Ms. Olson. Good morning, Erica Olson for the record. Um, I'm not sure if the committee would like to start the conversation before I give the overview. It's up to the pleasure of the board. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know if Nat had. <laughs> so I'm representing the um, direction from the um, Legislative and Executive Committee meeting last week. Um, specifically in the context of the three items, it al was also in the memo provided to the board. Um, we're coming forward with a recommendation to make the following um, changes to two goals um, that are, are um, in um, Mr. DeLone's um, goals for this year, 1920. Um, and these are recommendations that came from myself um, and Howard specifically for the following two reasons. Um, uh, number one is the way that the goals are drafted right now is they don't allow for flexibility of in-year um, adaptations and, um, and quite frankly, decision-making as it relates to investments and improvements in marketing and tourism sales as we're learning uh, what's working and what's not working through the course of the year. And so certainly the goals are in place for accountability um, accountability to the investments that are being made, but rather uh, we think there's a little bit of an opportunity for language changes that allow for adjusting the markets as uh, information comes forward, as well as thinking about setting the goal that's more dynamic against market movement. So those are really the two items, and the third item is then looking at that coming together um, in the proposed uh, goal language. So. I'll walk through them really briefly. That's pretty straightforward and it's pretty logical, quite frankly. Um, so I'll, I'll stick with the high level and then we can decide if we need to go deeper. So the first recommendation specifically for um, the marketing goal is currently in the marketing goal, there's specific language for those three markets. Um, and there's other markets that are being contemplated right now um, with the marketing team and, and BVK. So the suggestion is to allow the language to be uh, related to the markets where we are investing media spend. And then of course, when there are new markets that are being proposed, those will come forward to the board for approval. So we're just asking for a, a modified language change to allow for some flexibility in uh, where media investments are made. So that's the first, um, that's the first recommendation. The second recommendation and um, I'll walk through this somewhat briefly, is right now the target for both marketing and tourism sales um, are, are set based on a year over year increase based on the previous performance. And the recommendation that we would like to make is that doesn't take into consideration the market dynamics. So it's a bit smarter to set the target based on a percent improvement over the market. We like to call it beating the market as opposed to just a standard year over year increase based on the previous performance. So I'm not gonna get into too much detail on this, but some of the charts that I have here, which was also in your memo, shows that the red line is the market, is the total um, hotel Washoe County room night um, performance, that's the red line. So it went up over three years and then declined a little bit from last year to this year. The um, purple graph shows the target setting in place for both marketing and tourism sales. So we did a 2% increase over the previous year. And so what happened, of course, is the market declined from 17 to 18, and the target just kept going up. And so in both cases, whether the market's going up or the market's going down, it's more logical for both marketing and tourism sales to have a target that's more dynamic against the market. And so the suggested language change is um, to beat the market by 1%. So really simply, um, that's a suggestion. So it comes together in the following language. For the marketing goal, it would sound something like to grow destination awareness from the target markets, beating the market by 1% in either growth or decline as measured by the calendar year. And then you can see the, the rest of the language there. And similarly then for tourism sales. 
So again, beating the market uh, by 1%. So I'll stop there and turn it to the chair and to anybody from the committee to add language or make a recommendation. Mr. We had a lengthy discussion on all these issues, and I think uh, the, the group on that committee felt that, that these changes were definitely fair and fair all the way around. So we proposed unanimously to, to, for, to the board that we accept that we make these changes on uh, these particular issues. So I'm assuming that we have a, a source, that, like when we tie something to CPI, we have a source for that CPI. We have a source for measuring the market. Yeah, so currently the way that we measure the market is the total hotel room nights as reported from the hotels to the finance department. So that is the total hotel room that's based on taxable revenue. So yeah. There's no room for uh, shenanigans in there. This is this is public knowledge and everybody's good with it. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. I just, I'm just looking for, I don't want an appearance of anything, that, you know, that may be shady, but it sounds like it's pretty simple. We didn't have any umbrellas in the room. No. To make it shady. Okay. Any other questions? But Mr. Sturman? I just want to make a quick comment. Um, you know, one of the challenges that we thought was really important to overcome was how do you measure organic growth or loss versus the impact from the marketing programs. And so, you know, based on the suggestion from On Strategy, we thought that this was a really fair assessment on are the marketing programs creating impact? And, you know, by beating the market in the areas where we're focusing the most advertising dollars, we feel that that was a, a compelling factor to make this recommendation as a board. Or as a committee, excuse me. Ms. Keel. So just to be clear, are we talking about room nights or revenue? We're talking about room nights. Okay. So it's, you're comparing the, you're looking at room nights in those target markets versus overall room nights um, in the county. Okay, and if the overall growth from all of Washoe increases, then that means those target markets have to perform above what everyone else, every, okay. Is this, I don't know what, what experience you've had with other um, visitor authorities, um, and, and this is my first board seat on one, so is this, is this kind of change um, typical? I know at least in, in the companies that I've run, it's always been based on Year over year, year over year performance, unless of course there's a major economic downturn or you know terrorist whatever happens, then you might adjust goals from there, um, uh, whether it's your budget or last year's numbers. But I've never really had any of my salespeople be measured based on what's going on in the market. It's always been based on um, you know what what their last year's performance is or what we think because you because your numbers can adjust our numbers can adjust from a budgeting standpoint how much money are we going to spend where are we going to focus and that creates a budget and then the expectation is to try is to make that budget if there's major things that happen um, during the course of the year you can adjust off of that so i've never actually seen anything like this where their goals are based off of external kind of the whole market I don't know I guess I'm just a little confused on this I'll answer that one okay. for you um, we need to look at it as convention and group sales is one thing mm -hmm. tourism sales and marketing is a very different animal and that most of the other convention bureaus and authorities that I'm aware of they measure these two areas by activity not by anything qualitative, which we were able to do because of the visitor origination, we're very unique and, and we're so excited that we can look at real data and do a comparison. I'm not aware of one other destination that has done that. With, in my knowledge with marketing departments in other CVBs, one thing that they have done to get a measurable uh, reflection on activity is spend money to do an ad effectiveness study. And we do some of that in our target markets. But nothing is as detailed as we're able to do. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if On Strategy takes us on the road because it is groundbreaking and really forcing these two departments to be measured by something other than activities. And then just maybe adding to that, to your point, so the, the way that we did set the goals over the past two years was year-over-year -year growth, because that's pretty standard. Um, and there was a bit of a conversation related to, well, if the market is going up, then 
of course we should be growing. So there's really no reflection of impact on that. And then conversely, the other way as well. But what I think is important about the marketing and the tourism sales is though these numbers are in the millions versus the group sales in the hundred thousands. And they're not in control of all of the extraneous impact, extraneous or not extraneous, the external factors, be it weather, be it Tesla and Panasonic cutting travel, right. be it the hotels investments, you're all investments in various markets. And so that's just a little bit more of the dynamics that are that are in play with marketing and tourism sales. We've had a lot of conversations about this. And, and also to Jennifer's point, the VOA does give us a quantitative base to provide this um, measurable outcome, which we otherwise wouldn't have, and we would be measuring it based on activity. So I, I, the reason we're recommending this is because there's a a lack of dynamicism in these two goals that allow for the right decision making that you're asking these teams to, to carry forward, quite frankly. So anyhow, that was, that's why we think it makes sense to say beat the market. So that's the, the rationale. And then if we'd adjust the target markets throughout the year, um, which I would definitely support, do, are you still looking at, even if we adjust, you're taking the time, like the set time period from like two markets used looking at that and then yep. another two markets from their set time period. But again, you're not looking at last year you're, or, or goals. You're looking at those set time periods and then comparing it with the overall room night for all of Washoe. Correct. For and those specific time periods. For those so, time periods, okay. for those markets. For each one, yeah. And the reason we can do that is because of the data that you all provide us to conduct the visitor origination analysis by month so we have that data. Okay. Other questions? I, I'm, I'm going to go back to Ms. Keel's point of how does this affect budgeting uh, and, and creating a budget, for example? Is, is there enough of a flux in this that it could leave us short or way over budgeted or? So what I think is interesting about this too, and then I'm going to pass it to Jennifer because I might not have my numbers quite correct, but um, retroactively, if you were to look at you know last year's goals, we're not making disproportionately more investments in these markets. They're they're fairly they've been fairly steady state, correct, for the past three years. So so hence the performance pacing with that, right? We're not doubling down, um, and therefore we're not doubling the target. So but please speak to the actual dollars. Well. Our budget is approved in the beginning of the fiscal year and or prior to, and, and that's what we adhere to and move around. I think what we discovered was an unintended consequence when we had an opportunity to look at um, innovative marketing idea, which was not traditional advertising in these three markets. And we ended up, we're not going to go forward with it, but as we're talking through it, we were saying, wait a minute, we're measured on Bay Area, LA Basin, and Seattle. We're not taking into account our target market demographic and psychographic of our audience. They live across the country, they live everywhere. So if we were to do an innovative marketing program, it most likely would branch out outside of those three target markets. And we're sitting there going, and so it, it would be, within the parameter of our budget that was approved, but we would take money and say, you know what, we feel if we do this innovative marketing idea program that it will be driving more room nights than only putting all of our money in these three geographic buckets. And, th and that's kind of the origination of how that came out. So budget would stay as approved by the board and in the year, for the year, should, um, should we get a new airline to start serving a different market, Burbank, Austin, uh, Houston, and we decide that we want to put money there, I think it would be a very unique situation where we came to the board and asked for more money. Most likely what we would do is decide where to shift money to cover this new marketing in the year. Further questions? Okay, I'm looking for a motion. You want to think about that? Okay. <laughs> We've got a motion by Mr. Caroselli, a second by Ms. Silver. All those in favor? Aye. 
Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I'm curious to see how this works. I always like thinking outside the box. Uh, board member comments for future items or any other comments? Seeing none, we will go comments uh, by the public. I don't have any comment card. Anyone in the public wishing to speak at this time? Forever hold your peace. We are adjourned. One hour and 10 minutes. Nice job. That's work, man. I like it. <laughs>